Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In this lesson today, lesson 95, we're going to revisit guidelines for architecture diagrams. Now in lesson 94, the prior lesson, what I showed is how to take this kind of, well I won't call it a mess, uh, but misunderstanding um, about architectural diagrams. For example, when I indicated in that lesson I was trying to understand an architecture, uh, this, this kind of diagramming um, actually produced more confusion than it did understanding. And as you remember from the prior lesson, uh, we had arrows going to databases. I didn't know whether that was read or write access. We had lines without arrows, for example, between C and E. Uh, which I had no idea what the communication flow was. Uh, Bidirectional arrows between E and F, for example, which created a lot of confusion. And so we saw in Lesson 94 how to leverage diagramming to actually show what's really involved in going on here. However, there was a little bit of a problem, as you remember, in 94, and I wanted to focus on that in this Lesson number 95. And specifically, it's this area right here. So we saw in Lesson 94, one of the effective guidelines and techniques within diagramming architecture is to leverage solid and dotted lines to indicate synchronous calls, which are solid, and asynchronous calls, which are dotted. And this is what I use in architecture diagrams. It's an excellent guideline. However, there's still, it leaves, mm, uh, information uh, that's not there. For example, you see, let's do the scenario here uh, where E is requesting data from F, which is indicated by a solid line, synchronous. However, G is only simply passing data to F within some sort of workflow, whether it be synchronous or asynchronous. And with just using a solid or dotted line, I cannot convey this kind of information. And that does become important. So what I showed in Lesson 94 uh, was a technique I used which I indicated I really didn't like. And that was, if I'm requesting data, and then I showed that I sometimes put an arrow going back. Um, I don't like this technique. I was at a loss for another, <laughs> another kind of technique at that point. Because, A, it's a dotted line. And if dotted lines, as a standard in diagramming, are meant to convey asynchronous communication, uh, then this isn't correct. And also now I'm getting these arrows, too many arrows going back and forth. I did discover a new technique for conveying this information. Uh, rather than showing an additional line going back, it was necessary to say, well, E does have to wait for data. And so what I came up with was the universal sign for waiting, which is a hand raised here. And what that indicates in the diagram is that E is initiating a request to F synchronously here, but that it is waiting for data to be passed back to it, whether it be synchronous or asynchronous. I started using this technique and it turns out I really, really like it and it really conveys a really good understanding of really what's happening to try to understand that architecture. So we really now, folks, have four scenarios uh, be the, between the communication between E and F that we now have an effective way of communicating. And by the way, if you don't like the raised hand, um, pick some other symbol uh, that you want to standardize on to indicate that data is being returned. Let me show you these four scenarios now and how we can effectively convey those scenarios quite simply with lines and symbols. So scenario one is that E makes a synchronous call to F, waits for an acknowledgement that F did receive that information, but doesn't need any information back from F. And so in other words, this is just forwarding data along or initiating a workflow. For here, I'm going to show a solid line indicating that it's synchronous, but also that E is not going to wait for F to process, but does want to make sure that F does receive that communication call. Scenario two, E makes an asynchronous, in other words, a fire and forget call to F, usually through a queue or a topic, and doesn't need any information back from F, nor does it need an acknowledgement that F ever received that call. And so in this case, I'm going to show a single dotted line 
with an arrow, not bidirectional, just saying I'm making an asynchronous call to F. Now this is where it gets interesting because scenario three is that E makes a synchronous call to F and waits for data to be returned. In other words, I'm requesting information. So what I'm going to show here because it's synchronous is I'm going to show a unidirectional line, solid, initiated from E to F with the hand up there to say, I am initiating a request to F, but I am expecting data back and I will wait for that data. Our fourth scenario is that E makes an asynchronous call to F using request reply messaging and then waits for data to be returned to F. And this could be done asynchronously. It doesn't have to be a protocol such as messaging. And this could be asynchronous rest with a future or a promise. But the point is here, I'm going to show that asynchronous behavior using messaging or cues or waits um, using a dotted line initiated from E to F with the hand indicating that even though it's asynchronous, I still need to wait for data to come back from, from F. Uh, this effectively shows not only the initiating flow of information, but when information is also being returned. And so I'm going to kind of stick with this for the rest of my architecture diagrams until I come up with something better. And if I do, then I'll be sure and have another lesson for that. <laughs> so for more information, um, you can go to our book, um, Fundamentals of Software Architecture, that Neil Ford and myself wrote and published in February uh, 2020. Um, also, please um, visit developer2architect.com. Lots of great resources, books, articles, videos, and I also offer a lot of training courses as well, which you can go to that page uh, on, or the menu under training. So this has been Lesson 95, Guidelines for Architecture Diagrams Revisited. Again, my name is Mark Richards, and thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned in two weeks um, for another lesson in software architecture. And goodbye, everyone, and please stay safe. Bye-bye.